Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Wine by the Bay TV. I'm your host, George Bachara. Um, business first. Um, let's go ahead and t mention our sponsor, the Goosehead Insurance Company, the Bachara Agency, which is my agency. The power of choice is real. Um, if you need homeowners insurance, auto insurance, life insurance, you can go ahead and call about 30 or 40 different companies by phone, answer the same questions over and over again, get 30 different prices, and then pull your hair out. That's totally up to you. Or you can call me, and then I can do all the work for you. I can answer the question, ask you the questions once, and then I'll do the shopping. I'll get you the best price, the best coverage, and make sure that all your needs are being met. Um, if you want to go ahead and make your life easy, go down to the description, uh, the description box and uh, follow the link below, and we'll go ahead and get started for you. Um, so that's business. Now, episode two. Um, I know everyone thought that this would be a one-off, and there'd be no way anybody would come back. And do this a second time but haha -ha, i win i'm back again so episode number two um we are going to go ahead and stay in california today um but before i do anything else i did want to mention you're probably going to see the grinch on my shirt i have been accused of being the grinch many times having worked in the restaurant business for all those years you wind up working on the holidays so i am officially the grinch i don't want to be and i don't want to call anybody stupid but the shirt's calling everyone stupid so this is not me talking this is the shirt and stop laughing camera person, okay? Thank you very much. So, um, now down to pleasure. As we always mention, we have two wines today. We have a white wine, red wine. We're staying in California once again. As we get on to uh, bigger and better things, we will move out of, the, out of the state, but being that we are in the Bay Area, in the San Francisco Bay Area, I feel like the first few episodes have to be dedicated to wines in the state. So, I have the, uh, the Calling 2019 Chardonnay Russian River Valley from Dutton Ranch. Probably bring that over there so you can see it. There we are. And we have the Dow Cabernet Sauvignon from Paso Robles. That's a 2020, so that's pretty young. As is traditional, we have left the wines open for two hours, so they're going to have a little bit of air in there, and that way they'll make them better to drink. And once again, this is room temperature. Uh, for tasting purposes, it's a little bit warmer than you probably want to serve it, but don't over chill your white wine. 38 degrees is way too cold. You will taste nothing, you will numb your tongue, and then why bother? Then you can just drink red. Anyway, so we're going to start off with the white wine. And this one uh, was $29.99 total wine, 92 points wine spectator. And as we always talk about, we're going to go ahead and inspect the color. And it's got a little bit of a... Nice yellow hint, but it's not super dark, which is probably good because a lot of Chardonnays get over-oaked and they get darker. Um, so this is more of a traditional golden color, a little bit of straw. Um, got some nice pineapple on the nose, a little bit of uh, a little more orange peel maybe. Maybe some stone fruit or stone... Eh. Yeah, I don't really smell the pear as much as I thought I did. It's definitely a little pineapple, definitely a little orange. Yeah, there's a little citrus too, but I mean, I'm getting, initially, I got a lot of pineapple, a little bit of sweetness kind of in my, I know it sounds crazy, in my cheeks almost. Um, in my jaw, I'm tasting a little bit of that residual pineapple smell. Like, you know, when you smell, a, like if you go to the store, and buy like a whole pineapple and kind of smell it to see if it's ripe or not. I'm getting a little bit of that. Okay. So let's give this a shot here. Um, it's got a little more alcohol that I like, to be quite honest with you. The alcohol is kind of crowding out the flavors of the apple and the pineapple and the citrus that I, you would expect out of this wine. Um, maybe it was just my first wine tasting of the day.
Yeah, it's a little better. More of the fruit's coming out, but it's definitely got more alcohol than I would care for in a Chardonnay. I'm not really getting all the Chardonnay flavors that you would kind of want. So that's a little bit disappointing. Um, I don't agree. Uh, what is it? Uh, wine Enthusiast gave it 92 points. I don't think so. I'd go 89 plus on something like that. 89, 89 plus. Um, it's been open two hours, so I'm not really sure that much more air um, would help it. Maybe. I mean, yeah, I mean, the alcohol's crowding out the flavor profile. So I, I, I would say 89 points. At, at $29.99, you could probably do a whole lot better um, in the Chardonnay family. And that's kind of disappointing because uh, Dutton Ranch is actually a good producer. Um, they're in a lot of wine lists. Um, and a lot of different varieties um, across California. So it's shocking. Well, maybe it's not so shocking. Sometimes, you know, you get an off year or whatever. But this this, this just is not, it isn't, it's not fragrant. It's not fruity. It's a lot of alcohol. Give me one more chance. Let's see what happens. The nose is encouraging, but the the flavor profile just isn't there. I mean, if you want a Chardonnay, just to have a Chardonnay with a label somebody might recognize, okay, fine. This is definitely not buttery and over oaked, so that's good news. But to me, it's got way too much alcohol and it's crowding out the fruit flavors. So at thirty nine, sorry, at twenty nine ninety nine, I think you have considerably more options. So I would take a pass on that. Eighty nine plus points. All right. Wine number two. This is the Dow. I don't know if you can see that. The Paso Robles, California. Uh, 2020 Cabernet Sauvignon. Okay. Uh, so Dow is typically a pretty strong, pretty big wine. Um, Paso has a tendency to be kind of hot, obviously, as we know. So the heat produces a lot thicker skin. You know, you can't have a thin skin grape. In a very very hot climate it's going to burn and it's going to make some lousy wine so that's why cabernet um and, and zinfandel uh find itself uh, a really good home down in paso roble so we're going to give this a shot good color like we talked about last week there's uh, not a whole lot of bleed color wise on the edge of this wine let's see what happened with this one yeah this one Yeah, a little bit of bleed, but this is way better. And I know if anyone's watched this from episode one or knows me personally, you know that I hate white wine. But this is not wine bias. This is actually, this just is not 92 points. I'm really sorry. It just isn't. Um, anyone that tastes that. Oh, here comes my wife, the camera person, Megan. And she's going to give her opinion, apparently. Okay, really taste it critically. Don't just... Okay, there's I mean, there's alcohol. There's okay, but it is an alcohol product, that's for sure. Okay. All right, the white wine peanut gallery has spoken. There's alcohol. All right. By the way, uh, to those of you out in YouTube land, I really do love my wife, but she's not exactly the most critical wine drinker in the world. So, as much as I appreciate her input, if I seem a little snarky, it's a uh, it's well deserved. Well deserved. Anyway, I get a lot of stem on this one. A lot of stem. This one is also 92 points wine enthusiast. Um, I paid $19.97 a total wine. I've been seeing prices around $25 to $30 elsewhere, which is uh, which means that I made a good good purchase for sure. We're going to expect a lot of uh, you know dark berry flavor in here, some blueberry. Excuse me, maybe a little bit of smoke. Um, let's see what we've got. Twenty twenty, I'm a little concerned. This is a very young wine. If I had my druthers, um, I would probably lay this down for at least a year, probably three, to be quite honest with you, before I went near it. But um, it's a good holiday wine at the price point, nineteen ninety seven. So I was thinking, let's taste it and see what happens. And Dow is is uh, all over the place. You can find it in pretty much any wine shop, any liquor store, and of course on restaurant menus everywhere. So you can order this 
pretty easily and not uh, break the bank. So let's see what we've got. It's a little tight, but I got stemmy right away. Now, now a little bit of blueberries coming through. Maybe a little mulberry. Okay, let's give this a try. Let's see what we've got. Definitely young. There's a little hint of green. A little hint of stem. It's not, it's not awful. For a 2020 wine being opened in 2021... It's not bad. I mean, you're not getting a whole lot of complexity on this wine. I mean, not that you would absolutely expect to, um, but it's it's a drinkable wine. I mean, I'm not having it with food, um, and being that it's a cab and and a, and a warm climate cab for sure, um, that's that's good. I mean, Yeah, there's definitely a little bit of leather. Some nice tannins on there. Again, you're not getting the depth of flavor. You're getting a hint of dark berry, blueberry, maybe a little mulberry, whatever. But it's not the predominant flavor. It's definitely not sweet. Um, that can happen with overripe grapes. Um, you can get a whole lot of residual sugar, and then that translates into the wine, then it becomes essentially a fruit bomb. So it's not that. But... I would say it's definitely one note, definitely a little bit stemmy initially, and you're not getting a whole lot of berry flavor. There's a little bit of leather in there, but very, very little. You got to, I mean, I'm, starting, I'm tasting it now, kind of in the aftertaste, which isn't, you know, that's good. In fact, the fact that it's lingering on as long as it is, is surprising given the fact that it's a 2020. Um, so that goes, I mean, Dow's a good producer, so... 92 points, no chance. Absolutely not. Maybe five years from now, but I'd say this one's probably about 90 points. So the wine enthusiast and I are in disagreement once again. Um, we were 2 for 2 the last time, and now we're 0 for 2 this time in terms of scoring. I know uh, they're going to have a hard time sleeping, but uh, somehow they'll take a little NyQuil or something and things will be better. So anyway, um, so I would say 90 points on the Dow. Uh, 89 plus. Now that I'm giving this one 90, maybe I give it an 89 solid on the uh, Dutton Ranch Chardonnay. Um, two drinkable wines for sure. The Dutton Ranch is a little disappointing, especially at the uh, third at the thirty dollar price point. You can do better, uh, but I, I mean, if you can get the uh, the Dow for 19.97, you should absolutely do that. Absolutely do that. So I would say. Pick up as much Dow as you can at the $20 price point. Even at $26, maybe I wouldn't buy as much of it. But to have it as like a holiday wine with a big group, everyone can drink it, have a couple of, you know, something from the charcuterie plate. And then probably, you know what, that Dow too, with uh, a smoked meat like a salami or something or a dry copa, would smooth that out. And I think some of that stemminess would go away. You get a little bit of that more meaty flavor and some of that smoke. So that's a good way to go. And again, with the Dutton Ranch, probably you'd need to eat something. I would do some cheese, maybe a little shrimp, something that's going to uh, mellow out that alcohol. So that's that's where we are today. Episode two wrapping up. This, this is... Uh, this has been two successful ones, I think. Um, uh, so this is a Wine by the Bay TV. I'm your host, George Bachara, and you have a great holiday.